Hello there, and welcome back to my painting channel. Today we're going to tackle some desert camouflage. I've just got a few lists of paints that you may need, but I'll put all of the paints that you need in the uh, description below. As you can see, I'm using a nice grey primer this time. Uh, pretty much what I've done here is I've just covered it in a Vallejo khaki, which if you prime in your model, you could prime this with a Citadel Zandri dust, which will give you the exact same effect to give you this sort of um, khaki-ish feel to the miniature. I've added a little bit of the, the brown for the leather and just a little cream across his, uh, his emblem on his chest. And that's how base coat's done. I'm going to start with a Vallejo flat brown. Pretty much what we're going to do is we're not going to stick to a strict pattern as such. It's going to dab stages and build this camouflage in in patches. So you don't want to cover too much. You want these patches to work sort of like on opposing fronts. So you want to give a nice big chunk of the khaki the um, the Zandri dust base to stand out. But you just want to put these these splodges if you like. And you don't have to be strict and exact with these splodges as long as you just leave nice big wide open areas for that base coat to stay and you'll see i tend to dab quite a lot to try to mimic sort of the roundness of the brush edge to give this camouflage sort of um effect this sort of feel and again, you don't want it exact. Doesn't matter if you make mistakes because this is just like paint splodges, really. It's quite a fun thing to do. It's quite a fun and interesting thing to paint because you don't have to be precise or exact, um, but it gives you quite a good result when it's done. This was the first color we use in the darkest color out of the uh, out of the set at the moment. So like I say, you keep into your, your khaki or your Zandri dust base and keep in that wide, wide, bright colour. And you just add in these splodges of really, really dark um, flat brown onto these points so that you, you get that, that high contrast between your light and dark. Well, once you've done the darkest points with your flat brown, I've then moved on to Flat Earth from Vallejo. Now pretty much with this, what we want to do is just trace around one side of the flat brown. So you've got your real dark colour and your real dark tone is already there. And this now you're just doing the same, dabbing that splodges and tracing around the side edges of the darker colour. So it's almost like you're using this as like a, um, a mid-tone and the dark colour then is your surrounding shadow. And again, you don't have to be too precise, it doesn't matter if you leave gaps or anything like that, because you just put in this pattern here and there. You might find that if you put too much colour, it might spoil the effect. So try to leave as much of that khaki, as much of that Zandri dust base that you can so that it just gives you this, this sort of splodged paint effect. Because I'm thinning these coat, uh, these paints, it may take a couple of coats to get the exact sort of consistency that you're looking for, and that's fine as well. You know, you take your time with it. Make your coats nice and thin. Put multiple coats on if you need. Just have some fun with it. I 
I mean, there's a few different ways that you can do this, and no one set way is exact or precise. It's just whichever way works best for you. Just wanted to share what I've done with you guys just to see if this helped any of you to do something similar. I was talking to someone the other day and they said that this, this camo scheme, this paint scheme would look really nice for a Tau army and I, I have to agree, I think this would look really, really interesting on a Xeno army. Um, although it does look really good on the Marine as well. Again, you can see I'm just making random patterns. You know, I haven't planned any of this. There's no... Uh, there's no plan, there's no like pencil marks on the marine when I planned this out. This is just literally sitting down and just thinking, right, how can we make these sort of um, camo patterns um, sort of come to life, if you like. I'm moving on to a Citadel colour here. This dry hard bark is a very, very, very dark colour. It's a really, really, really good base tone um, to go underneath. It's actually the colour that I've used to do the leathers uh, on his belt strap and things like that. And this, what you want to do is just load up the tip of your brush and just tap um, so that you get these dots. And you want to get these nice dark dots. And again, it doesn't matter if they're circles or not circles, it doesn't make too much of a difference because you're going to go back over them with a lighter colour in a moment. These again are going to have sort of a shadow effect that will sit around your lighter tone, which we'll show you in a sec. So just use the tip of that brush and dab it um, onto the marine so that you get these dots, so that you get this this pattern, this random um, pattern of, of well, points really. Again, you can see I'm not being overly precise. I haven't got a plan. I'm just sitting down and I'm just building these uh, these dots. Up. I tend to find that the dots work really, really well in threes. So when you place your dots, you can place them in sort of like three little points, like so. And I find that works really nice. It has a sort of um, subtle effect that, that, that works really well. It catches your eye then on the miniature. Um, and from there, you move on then to your Vallejo Bone White. And this, as you can see, we're doing the same again. But this time, you need to be a little bit more precise because what we're doing is we're putting the dots, very, 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 very light dots on top of those very dark dryad bark dots but we're not covering the whole dot so you want that dryad bark to stand out okay so when you place this dot as you should see there you want to try to leave a little bit of that darkness around the outside of the dot you don't want that that white to take over the dark because then it doesn't give you the contrast. You want to keep that darkness to give that contrast in the armor. And that's what it looks like when you've done your base coat without any sort of shadows, any sort of shades or anything like that. So that's just painting around the whole miniature in the same effect. So building from your dark to your light with your dots and things like that. And from there, um, I have used a army painter, soft tone, quick shade just to get into the recesses now when you shade the model down you might find that it does detract some of the color so it does take some of the color out especially on those creamy points so you may have to go back and reapply it can be a little bit of a pain but it's worth it in the end because when you get to the end result it does look really 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 cool and if you had an army of these on the table I can guarantee you that your opponent would look across and think, wow, this guy's put a lot of effort and a lot of time into his miniatures. But it's just a cool effect. It's a fun little effect to, to, to make your paint jobs and your miniatures stand out and look completely different. Well, as always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this small tutorial. And um, happy painting, guys. Enjoy it.